Here's everything Apple announced at WWDC 2021. Starting off with iOS 15, FaceTime received a few new features that making connections and staying in touch with other people from a distance is now better than ever. Users can now watch or listen to movies and music together via FaceTime calls or share your screen with your FaceTime call for easier ways to plan trips or maybe just help out a family member with any potential issues that they might be having with their devices. I know we've all been there before and this is a much welcome feature. Spatial audio has been added to conversations that disperses audio into different directions that's tied to where that person is positioned on the screen. There's new mic modes that minimize background noise and puts your voice front and center. Or on the flip side, you can turn on wide spectrum mode to share the sounds of your environment during your call. You can also arrange participants in a new grid view, enable portrait mode during video calls to put the emphasis on you even more, and you can now schedule FaceTime calls with new FaceTime links. In the Messages app, there's a new Shared With You feature that's implemented throughout a few different apps as well, like Photos and News, to view content at a later date that might have been shared with you in a conversation. A better way to view photos via photo collections in Messages has also been implemented, and it can let you cycle through photos in this new stacked view. Apple also introduced a new notification look as well as notification summary, which allows you to catch up on notifications that might not be super time sensitive and can be viewed at a later date in order to catch up later on. Or maybe when you wake up, you can see what you missed throughout the night, giving you just an easier way to stay in touch with what's going on, but maybe not focus your attention away from what's pressing during that specific moment in time. Speaking of focus, there's a new focus feature that allows only the notification that you might want or are really time sensitive to get through and will also give users a signal of your status, letting your friends know that you might be working or sleeping or having dinner with your family, etc. For urgent messages, there's still a way for users to get through. Maps now introduces 3D landmarks, new driving features like more details in turn lanes, making it easier to see which exit you need to get off of but what lane you need to stay inside of. There's crosswalks and bike lanes, as well as immersive walking instructions and updated transit features like nearby stations and transit times. Wallet has been updated to now finally add ID cards in specific states at this current moment in time, like your driver's license. There's even new hotel room keys that can be added to your wallet, keys to get into your home, open up your garage, etc. Apple also announced a new live text feature that can scan text inside of photos to copy and paste into other apps like emails. You can even highlight and select text from those photos. Say there's a phone number in the background, you can select and highlight that text and then act on that to make a phone call. You can even use this feature to look up objects like animals, landmarks, books, etc. Spotlight received an improvement with new rich search results for artists, shows, movies, as well as your own contacts, and Photos has added support for Apple Music within new interactive memories. You can customize your memories and add songs from your Apple Music library, and the photos sync dynamically to the music, which is pretty cool. Some other quick updates to iOS 15 include new health app features that allows users to share health information with family members to better track your close family and loved ones. There's better metrics to assess whether you might be at risk of falling in the near future and other changes to your health over time for easier monitoring. Privacy continues to be a focus for Apple and it's been improved upon again in iOS 15 with app privacy reports showing you when you've granted permissions to those apps and how recently those apps have made contact, as well as Siri audio is now never leaving your device, so requests are a lot faster and safer. One quick note about Siri that Apple very briefly touched on is the fact that Siri has now been opened up to third-party devices, so other hardware makers can add Siri into its speakers, thermostats, etc. Apple also added a slew of new features to iCloud, like iCloud Private Relay, Hide My Email, and expanded HomeKit Secure Video support without changing its tier of prices. So if you have paid 
for any of iCloud features in the past. It's now been rebranded to iCloud Plus and the prices remain the same. The biggest features that were announced for iPadOS include a brand new way to multitask on an iPad. Now it's easier than ever to choose an app for Split View, an easier way to remove an app in exchange for a different app inside of Split View too. And you can also bring up a new center window like an email in order to view everything inside of that message on top of other things that might be going on inside of Split View. And there's a new shelf that's been added to view all of your open windows for an application and quickly switch between them. The app switcher has been updated to create split view spaces inside of this view, as well as create a new split view by dragging one app over another. For those using a keyboard, you can do all of this by just using shortcuts so you don't have to lift a finger. Just hold down the command key to bring up those new shortcuts for multitasking. You can also finally add widgets on your iPad anywhere on your home screen, and there's new larger widgets to take advantage of the larger display. My favorite part about the new iPad home screen is the app library. You no longer have to have every app on your iPad's home screen. Something that's been around for the iPhone since last year has finally made its way to the iPad. Quick Notes lets you start a note from anywhere on your iPad by swiping from the corner, and you can put anything in a quick note like names, numbers, and even links from Safari, and it's all kind of dynamic when you're inside of a Safari uh, link, it'll your quick note could pop up, letting you know that you have notes about that specific website, and all of those notes are organized inside of the Notes app, and it's in a nice grid view so that you can find those quick notes easily. All of the other privacy, FaceTime, SharePlay features that we talked about in iOS 15 have also made its way onto iPadOS 15. WatchOS 8 now lets users add portrait mode photos from iPhone to your watch face. This features a dynamic, multi-layered effect that really makes your friends and family pop out and be front and center on your wrist. You can also share photos from your watch with a few simple taps, can easily switch between different modes like dictation, scribble, and emojis. And focus is even available on watchOS 8 so that you can quickly turn on which focus mode that you might be in at that current moment in time. And there are a few new health features and fitness features coming like Tai Chi workouts, new guest trainers and Apple Fitness Plus, and more. And finally, macOS 12 is now macOS Monterey. And this update brings all of those new FaceTime and SharePlay features found inside of iOS and iPadOS, as well as the new messages features that we mentioned earlier, like shared with you, focus, quick notes, and other notes improvements like organizing notes with tags, sharing notes with mentions, and activity view, but also a few other new features like AirPlay to Mac, which brings all of the great features we love about AirPlay, but now for your Mac, and also universal control, which is witchcraft in my opinion, and lets your work across devices seamlessly, specifically your iPad. You can use your Mac's mouse or trackpad between your iPad automatically. Everything just flows from one device to another. You can drag content and links from one device to another, and there's no setup required. It just works. Shortcuts is now coming to the Mac, and you can now create Mac specific shortcuts, which is going to be fun to see what users come up with. And Safari received a pretty massive update. There's a new look and feel to the tab bar, which takes on the color scheme of the specific website that you might be in. There's redesigned floating tabs and a more streamlined approach to how you browse the web. Tab groups is a huge improvement in sorting out all the hundreds of tabs you might have open at one time by categories like travel or cooking, etc. And you can easily edit or create new categories uh, between those groups and keep your toolbar less cluttered and crazy. This feature has actually been implemented throughout the rest of the ecosystem where Safari is available. And on iOS, the Safari navigation bar is now at the bottom and you can easily swipe with your thumb between different groups of tabs too. Of course, there's a lot of other new features that Apple didn't quite get around to explaining or briefly touched on, and we'll be doing a full deep dive and going hands-on with each new beta over the next week or two, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those videos. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.